Good evening, Kutztown. I'm Diana Minogue. Coming up in tonight's newscast, Bear Fest continues with tonight's Kudung Palooza, and various Kutztown groups work to support great causes. And I'm Jeff DePalm with an update on all things sports. We also have Viviana Vidal with your Hollywood Minute. And I'm Josh Watkins with your Kutztown weather forecast. News break begins now. On Thursday, April 16th, Zeta Phi Beta and Zeta Sigma hosted the KU Charity Convention. Here is Shante, Shante Taylor with the story. On Thursday, April 16th, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority and Zeta Sigma Chapter hosted their charity auction. This event included free refreshments, door prizes, and gift baskets in which students could bid on. Kristen's own John Zimbala and Maya Wilson also performed a cover to the song, Thinking About You. <laughs> made an appearance. This event raised about $200 and the proceeds will go to the March of Dimes Foundation. The charity auction started off as like auction of people but it kind of became like not as good to do so this is our second year doing the basket raffles and auctioning off baskets. Um, our philanthropy has always been the March of Dimes um, so what we do is we um, have the student organizations and merchants from Kutztown donate baskets um, and we just auction them off. We have the students come out and it's just to raise awareness about premature babies and for our philanthropy, the March of Dimes. Why did you decide to come out for this event tonight? Uh, I kind of just found out about it. Like a lot of my friends said they were going to come out. So I was like, you know what? It's a new experience, meet some new people and just see what happens. So did you enjoy this event overall? Oh, absolutely. Because I mean, my mom's birthday is May 10th and I, I was thinking about a way to get her a gift. And Mother's Day is also coming up soon. So I killed two birds with one stone and got her this. As you can see, a lot of people came out to this event tonight and everyone pretty much seemed to enjoy themselves. I know. I'm Shanti Taylor reporting for Newsbreak. Thanks, Shante. BearFest 37, sponsored by Housing and Residence Life, continues today with the Pudding Palooza. KUR will host its Music Fest, complete with a pudding slide, bungee bowl, a screening of the movie Pitch Perfect, and other events until 10.30 tonight. And I just have reports in that it will be moved inside for this evening due to the weather. It will still be fun, so you should still go. Join us again tomorrow in South Dining Hall at 6 p.m. for a Set the Cards on Shuffle, a casino-themed night of games, bingo, prizes, flipbook photos, food, and more. The week-long celebration wraps up Saturday with the legendary Bear Fest Carnival. Come on out to the DMZ from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. for a petting zoo, inflatable rides, and performances from the best of KU. You'll also find games, music, and tables from almost every club on campus. It's definitely one of the biggest events here at Kutztown and a must-see for every student, new and old. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Make that Thursday. Today, Zeta Tau Alpha celebrated their annual Pink Out event in front of the sub. With games, baked goods, and lots and lots of pink, the sorority raised money for breast cancer education and awareness. With the goal of raising over $2,000 for this cause, earlier reports placed them at $1,930, so here's to hoping that they reach their goal. And now we are going to send it on over to Viviana Vidal for this week's Hollywood Minute. Thanks, Diana. It appears that Hollywood is running out of ideas, or because the reboots just keep coming and coming. First, they announced the remake of National Lampoon's Family Vacation. The classic film from 1983 followed the Griswold family as they make their way across the country to America's favorite family fun park, Wally's World. The remake is set to premiere in July 2015 and stars Ed Helms as grown-up Rusty alongside on-screen wife Christina Applegate and Chris Hemsworth. Another vintage show making a comeback in 2016 is Full House. John Stamos, a.k.a. the devilishly handsome Uncle Jesse, confirmed to Jimmy Kimmel Live that Netflix has picked up a 13-episode run. In Fuller House, veteran actors Candace Cameron Burr will reprise her role as DJ Tanner, a widow who has two sons and one on the way. She seeks the help of her musician sister Stephanie Tanner, a.k.a. Jody Sweeten, and neighbor Kimmy Gibbler, played by Andrea Barber. What an interesting perspective it will be to see the genders reversed on Fuller House. Wouldn't you guys agree? That's all I have for your Hollywood Minute this week. Now back to you at the desk. Thanks, Viviana. You know, Jeff, my little sister will be thrilled to hear about this Full House revival. Your little sister won't be the only one. I can guarantee I'm going to love this. All I need them to bring back now is home improvement. See my boy Tim the Toolman Taylor would just be more than I need to be excited. <laughs> All right, well, when we get back, we'll have your Kutztown weather forecast right after these messages. Kutztown University. The place you chose to spend your college days. Friendships began. 
memories were made, and dreams achieved on graduation day. Time moves on, new faces come and go, but one thing remains, you can always come back home. Disappointing this morning, Jeff, when I woke up and it was raining. It, we've had such nice weather until then. Yeah, I mean, I was really shocked when I looked out the window and it's actually snowing for a bit. Snowing? I don't know. Hey, Josh, what's going on this week with the weather? Still trying to wrap my head around the idea of snow in April. I don't get it. Well, anyways, let's take a look at your weather. Today's was basically all over the place. It started out really nice and warm, then all of a sudden turned cold. Temperatures hit a high of 43, but tonight they're going to be going down to 32. So we may get more snow tonight. Who knows? Looking at tomorrow's forecast, we're looking at a nice sunny day. Temperatures about 54 degrees, but once again going down below freezing. So, hey, who knows? Maybe we'll have another snow day right before we graduate. Looking at your weekend forecast coming up, Saturday and Sunday are looking to be pretty much complete opposites. Saturday, we're looking for a lot of sun and nice warm temperatures. And Sunday, we're looking for the same warm temperatures, but probably not a lot of sun, mostly clouds. Monday and Tuesday are going to be very similar days. Temperatures, high 50s, low 60s, going down to about the low 40s, but we're going to have rain on both those days. Then Wednesday, we're looking at for some sun. Temperatures, high 64, going down to about 45 degrees, so it should be a really nice midweek. That's it for your weather forecast. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks for clearing that up, Josh. The Feminist Majority Leadership Alliance, or FMLA, and the Women's Center teamed up this week to organize events in honor of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the College Home Memorial Grove, just outside of Old Main, FMLA hosted its Clothesline Project, a collection of t-shirts that display the pain, suffering, and survival of victims of sexual assault. Students are welcome to participate by creating a t-shirt of their own at the Women's Center in Old Main, or simply to come and see the display. Happening now from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. is Take Back the Night, an annual event that provides an open forum for everyone, from students to community members, to share their stories of sexual assault and to seek healing from the experience. The event will take place at the Alumni Plaza and will include a candlelit ceremony and a short march. Refreshments will be served in the Old Main Concourse following this event. In support of another worthy cause, KU Clinical Services hosts its Out of Darkness Walk for Suicide Awareness and Prevention this Sunday evening. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., join them on the DMZ and walk either alone or in a team to support the campaign against suicide. Walks like this in cities across America help the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention to educate people about suicide prevention and to actively work to reduce suicide rates in our country. Registration begins at 5 p.m. that evening and is free, so bring your friends and walk for life. Jeff, I think it's fantastic that so many groups on campus are just getting involved in these issues and standing for things that are such worthy causes. Yeah, especially as being college students where suicide rates are a lot more than, nor than ever. I really just hope a lot of students come out to this one. So when we come back, I'll have an update on women's softball, women's lacrosse, and tennis. So stay tuned.
Welcome back to Newsbreak. Let's check out the women's softball as they continued their matchup with Millersville after it got rained out several weeks ago. They resumed play in the bottom of third with two outs and Kutztown leading one to nothing. That would actually be where they would end it as well as there were only two hits in the whole game, one by each team. That lone run came two weeks ago when Rachel Laws hit an infield single to bring home Sam Fraser. Dominique Ficara picked up the complete game victory. She threw a two-hit shutout with five strikeouts on 94 pitches. Millerville's Brianna Anderos threw 87 pitches and allowed three hits in the loss. After winning four of the last six games, Kutztown sits in fourth in this week's NCAA Atlantic Region Poll. Eight teams qualify for postseason play with two regional sites, and Kutztown is still in the mix for a chance to compete and host an NCAA tournament game. KU has an important matchup this weekend against third-ranked Westchester. The NCAA selections will be made Monday at 10 a.m. on www.ncaa.com. So stay, so stay on the lookout for those results. Next up, we have Lumens Lacrosse teams. They take on the second-ranked team in the nation in Lock Haven for, for the final home game of the season. Kutztown came ready to pull up the upset. However, Lock Haven, they had other ideas as the Lady Eagles came out to a 10 to nothing lead before Kutztown got themselves on the board when Lauren Huggins took, herself for the, uh, took it to herself for the unassisted goal. KU only managed to score once more in the second half when Devin Davis scored on the free position attempt. Lock Haven would round out the final three goals to win 16 to two. Courtney O'Neill had another strong showing defensively, leading the Golden Bears with five ground balls and five caused turnovers. O'Neill currently ranks second in the PSAC in ground balls per game with 3.73 and caused turnovers per game with 2.20. KU goalkeeper Jen Berge tried her best in goal as she recorded six stops, but when Lockhaven leaves the shot advantage 27 to 8, it's just difficult to manage much. KU will try to, end the, try to end the year on a good note when they travel to Gannon for their last game of the year this Saturday. The road to the championships are underway for the KU men's tennis team and it's looking like they will be taking on a familiar opponent. After just beating them 5-4 in a head-to-head -head matchup, Mercyhurst is back for a rematch in the PSAC semifinals. Bluefield State ranks atop the Atlantic region, West Liberty is second, West Virginia, Wesleyan in third, Charleston is fourth, Edinburgh fifth, KU is slotted sixth, Mercyhurst is seventh, Shaw is eighth, and Cho Wan is ninth. NCAA selections will begin on Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. on www.ncaa.com. That's all I have you tonight, Kutztown. Make sure you check back in Tuesday night to see how your Golden Bears did over this big weekend. If you, have, if you just can't wait to see more, then head on over to kubears.com. That's all we have for you tonight. We'll see you again on Tuesday. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter to keep updated with the upcoming news from Kutztown University. For Diana, Josh, Viviana, and the rest of the crew, good, good night. night.